In this video, I'm going to show you how AI can be used to automate data analytics and reporting. And the way I'm going to do that is by walking you through this application that I built that allows people to connect to different data sets and then create charts and tables and other visualizations just by using natural language describing what they want to see from the data. Then they can also create dashboards from these visualizations with highlights and insights of the data. And then finally, they can create reports from these dashboards in just a couple of clicks, getting it out in a PowerPoint presentation. And you can also try this application yourself. Uh, it's actually based on a lot of uh, client work I've done over the last couple of months around this AI analytics topic. But now I've made this demo application available on my website totally for free, just for people to see themselves how AI can be used for this stuff. And I'm going to talk about that more at the end of the video, showing you exactly where you can find it and go create some visualizations and reports uh, yourself. But first, I'm just going to walk you through the application and all the features uh, here in this video. Okay, so this is going to be the starting point of our application, uh, where most of the magic happens. And our demo application is connected to two different data sets in our uh, Google Cloud uh, database. And up here, we can see some more detail about what exactly is in those data sets. They are for two fictional companies. One is a small software consultancy with projects, employees, time tracking. And then the second data set is for e-commerce with customers, products, orders, product reviews. So we'll start with the consultancy data sets and we'll start with something simple. We have a couple of these examples that we can get started with. Uh, so we'll do a line chart of monthly revenue uh, with a rolling average. And then we'll also do this time allocation by different task categories in a percentage bar chart. And then what happens is that the AI underlying the application is just going to figure out how many visualizations the user is asking for. So we can ask for a single chart or up to five in a one go. Here, of course, we get these two. We get the line chart and the bar chart uh, that we asked for here. And then the AI simply figures out what kind of database query it should uh, create to get the necessary data for each visualization. And then in the application side, how to set up the visualization uh, in the correct way so that we end up with something like this. And here we can also then edit these visualizations again, just by describing what we want. So for example, here we can just uh, add a profit under these uh, revenue lines as a bar series. And then instead of let's, let's do, let's do the last 12 months instead of a year to date. And then those changes are going to get applied in a, in a moment. And while that's processing, then we can also inspect each of these visualizations here. So we can see the underlying data. We can see the database query. Uh, so if we understand the basics of SQL, we can do some validation here, see that everything is as we intended. And so there's our edits to the line charts. Now we see the profit here in this new series, and we see the data all the way to the previous 12 months. So that's pretty cool. Now we can save these visualizations in a dashboard so that we can create these collections of visualizations without having to recreate them every time. I don't have any created yet, so I'll just create a new one. My consulting dashboard, pin that there. Do the same thing for this. And then we're going to do a few more things here. We're going to do this one of uh, new hires as a pie chart, as well as a table showing them in a bit more detail with names and roles and also utilization uh, since they were hired. And of course, we can change all of these examples as we like. That's the whole point of an application like this. So instead of 2025, let's do 24. And let's change the role to employment type. I think we have the options here for uh, full-time, part-time contractor. Uh, so we can see the grouping by those instead in the pie chart. And here, let's also add the rates, the hourly rates, internal and billable for each person. And that's again going to give us uh, two visualizations, one being the pie charts and then the other one being the table. And there we go. So we can see that we have mostly full-time people. Of course, like the data, like I said, is completely synthetic and fake. So some of the numbers might seem a little, little strange or unrealistic, but that's just how it is. It's always a little tricky to come up with realistic uh, fake data uh, for these kinds of scenarios and demos, but just something to keep in mind, especially if you go and try the application yourself. 
One thing we can also do for the tables is that we can add highlighting. So we can add highlight rules uh, to different columns to more easily see different values. Uh, so for example, here we can, we can ask it to highlight uh, low and high utilization rates with utilization here just being the total capacity that each person has versus how much of that capacity goes into billable client work, which is a very standard uh, metric to look at in consulting. And there we go. It seems like the threshold is uh, highlighted if it's less than 80 or more than 90, which is pretty reasonable. Uh, we can see that here uh, in the config right here. And now we're just gonna pin both of these to our dashboard as well. And before I go into the report generation and dashboard part of the application. We're just going to do a few more things on the other data sets. And one thing I want to point out here is that we can also ask more open-ended questions without necessarily specifying what type of visualization we want to use. So for example, this one, which generation buys the most sustainable products? Uh, in this case, the AI is then just going to take a guess at what kind of visualization it could use uh, to answer this question. And then we'll just do this table of revenue for top five states. And let's do customer acquisition by channel in a clustered bar chart for the last six months. And there we go. We have our two bar charts, our table. And for the sustainable purchases, I think, I'm not sure what this is based on, but I think we have this sustainability score uh, in the data out here. That's from a range of one to 10. And here the AI has just decided to set a threshold at more than eight and count those purchases as sustainable purchases, which is pretty reasonable. So that's all well and good. Here again, the customer acquisition data looks a little little strange, but I think that's mostly a data issue rather than something something here because the database query itself is pretty pretty simple. And then the last thing I'm going to show here on this studio page is the fact that we can also then share these individual visualizations through email. So this is just gonna pre-populate this kind of a simple email that we can edit uh, with the chart as an attachment. And then we can just uh, choose who we wanna send it to. I'm just gonna send it to myself and then go show that to you right here. So that should give you a pretty good idea of this studio view and the different features we have here. So now let's take a look at the dashboards and the reports. So here we have this dashboard where I pinned a couple of these visualizations. And there's a couple of things here. Uh, the first one, although it's disabled now for the demo because there's actually no new data coming in to these data sets that we have, I still left this here to highlight the fact that because each of these charts is just a, basically a database query, there's nothing stopping us from just automatically rerunning that database query on some schedule so that we can actually have these real-time updating dashboards built this way. So although it's disabled here for now, I just left it here to give you an idea of what this kind of an application might look like in a more production setting and what, what things you could do with it. And then the second thing is these AI generated insights or highlights that are automatically generated for each chart. And you know, these are nothing too crazy, just describing some key patterns or interesting highlights or kind of summarizing the data in each, each visualization. But then the part that I think really ties it into this more end-to-end -end analyst workflow is this export functionality here, whereby it's gonna open this dashboard in a presentation format with an automatically added uh, cover page. We also have this methodology here with some pretty generic uh, methods of the data sources and how the analysis was done. And we have our logo here. And then we have each of the individual charts in that dashboard added as new slides. And then of course we can make any edits we like. So, you know, we can, we can add some of our own analyst comments like so, changing these slide titles or subtitles changing the layout of the slide. I mean, right now, we just have two pretty simple layouts just to give you an idea. And then once we are done with any edits, adjustments we want to make, then we can just download here and we get out a PowerPoint file like this. And so that's basically our application. And one thing you might notice is that it doesn't really have this conversational nature to it that you might expect. You know, there's no chatbot anywhere that you're talking to. And that's really done on purpose because although we've done a few projects like that recently where we had a more of a chatbot based uh, solution that could create charts in the chat and answer analyst comments, 
Uh, here I wanted to focus a bit more on this reporting workflow because really what analysts often want to get in the end is some kind of PowerPoint report. So even if they are using some kind of a chat tool, uh, what often happens is that they'll just have to copy and paste from the chat into PowerPoint. So then why not just build the application itself in a way that better aligns with this kind of a user workflow? Uh, so yeah, that's just a bit of a side topic in the world of building AI applications, although it's very tempting and very common to just throw a chatbot at every problem. I uh, usually when you set up to automate or support some kind of workflow, uh, there's much more that can be done in terms of UI and UX. And the chat really isn't the ideal interface for you know most things that people do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so I wanted to highlight that point in this application as well. Anyway, like I promised, uh, this application is available for you to use on my website. So if you'll go to functio.ai slash analytics, you'll come to this landing page where you'll also see this kind of a couple of minute walkthrough of the demo. But of course, if you just finished watching this on YouTube, uh, then you can skip that part and go directly to the application here. And then you can sign up with your email here. And this is going to give you a link to access the demo like this. And then here you can just get started. So as always, hope you found this video interesting and have fun playing around with the demo.